Upon the examination of galaxy space, images begin to appear. Images of strange and powerful forces. But of all of the forces of the universe, the two most powerful, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, prepare to explode. Champion versus champion. Title for title. It's the ultimate challenge. It's WrestleMania. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting installment of Wrestling Rampage. The three amigos are back in this bitch. That's right, guys. We are back right here with another review. Now, uh, when we did it last year, we let everybody vote. Yeah. On what WrestleMania we wanted uh, that that they wanted to see us review, and that was WrestleMania 17. But today, guys, we did a little something different. We decided to ask the old man what WrestleMania he would like to watch and review, and uh, it's very it's a very uh, rarity to have the old man in, in a in a in a video like this. And pops, what did you choose? WrestleMania six. We're going to be doing WWF WrestleMania 6. Uh, this is the review for you guys. Uh, April 1st, 1990. Uh, the commentators were, uh, were Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse the Body Ventura. Yep, uh, Jesse the Body Ventura and Gorilla Monsoon. I thought, uh, I thought they were a good commentary team, but I, if I had to choose, I like Bobby Hannon and Gorilla Monsoon better. So you prefer WrestleMania 8th? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like Jesse and Gorilla. I thought they had really good chemistry, well, especially on the show. Well, if I had to, they'd be second. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I'm sorry, I like Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon better. I, I, I like them both. I, I, I like Bobby Heenan with, with Gorilla Monsoon, and I also like Jesse. Because, because they both will make you laugh. They do. And uh, we're right here in the Sky Dome in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And uh, this is actually the first international WrestleMania. <clears throat> yep. Uh, and then the second one would be WrestleMania 18. Right back in the Sky Dome. Yeah, where you got to watch a shitty match between Goldust and Maven and uh, <laughs> all those other shitty matches. Oh, uh, WrestleMania 18 review is in the archives. Yeah. So you guys go check yeah, out you that. You can watch as well. Goldust and Maven. And uh, what's another shitty match? Uh. If you can bear it. <laughs> yeah, 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 if you can bear it. Uh, I can't think right now. I'm thinking about WrestleMania 6. Uh, and uh, what you guys think about the setup in the Sky Dome? You got the big Jumbotron. I enjoyed the setup. Uh, and then uh, uh, what about the uh, mini ring carts? Yeah, I enjoyed that, the uh, that mini drove the wrestlers ring carts. Down to yeah, I, I like the uh, ring cart deal. They even did that at WrestleMania 3. And mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. So I like the ring carts. I wish they'd bring them back. You like the ring carts, Pops? No, I, I, I thought it was very good. You, you know, it, 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 well, all, all it is is, is ma mainly mainly a, 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 a scissors a, lift. Yeah, that, that's all it is. And, and I like the way, way they put they made it into a little ring, which was which is very you know that, that, that's very intelligent. You know, it is. We're gonna go with the dark match when Paul Roma. Takes on the Brooklyn Brawler. And we'll just say, fuck it, Paul, Roma beat the Brooklyn Brawler. We can move on from that. Yeah, uh, not a stellar dark match, huh? Well, well, well it's, you, it's Paul Roma match. <laughs> there you go. The no, job guy from the WWE? Well, you, you know, you know, you know when, when you see them both come out, you know who's going to take the fall anyway. So. so what is this, a uh, year later, year and a half later, he becomes a horseman? Yeah. So there you go. Uh, we have, uh, well, since we're in Toronto, Ontario, we have to have, uh, the, uh, national anthem of theirs as O Canada. Yep. Sung by Robert Goulet. Uh, yeah. well, Goulet, excuse me. Goulet, uh, Goulet, uh, we skipped this shit. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we skipped O Canada. I guess, I, I guess maybe it, me it means more to the Canadians than it does us, but, uh, no, 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 no disrespect. It's just, no. it's just, we wanted to get right to the action. Yeah. And uh, right into the action we got when we have Coco Beware in the opening match with Frankie as he comes out and uh, my, my favorite call by, by, by Gorilla Monsoon when he gets in the ring and Coco's doing the bird. Coco's doing the bird. I love it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, he's going to be taking on the model Rick Martell. 
Yeah, uh, I thought this was a pretty decent opening match to kick off WrestleMania 6. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I thought Coco and uh, Rick Martel put on a pretty decent match here. I thought it was a good opening match. Now, you mentioned maybe if he had a... Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'm, he he broke away from Strike Force at WrestleMania 5. Yeah. I think he should have feuded with Tito around this time. Do you think a feud with Tito and Rick Martel could last a year? Well, goddamn, like, like, they didn't have no fucking feud. Basically, fucking Rick Martel just fucking, uh, fucking turned on fucking Tito, left him high and dry against the Brain Busters. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was about the end of that. I didn't see no goddamn feud. <laughs> All I saw was little snippets of feuds with them. Well, you know, uh, Coco Beware and Rick Martel didn't really have much of a feud. Well, this, match, well, this was a throw-in match. But, you, know, uh, you, you know, around these WrestleManias, they just threw in matches. Well, I, I like Rick Martel, and, and, and Coco can work, especially yeah. if you've ever seen some of his Memphis stuff. Yeah, yeah and I, I'm going to be honest, I thought this was a pretty uh, good opening match to kick off WrestleMania 6. Sometimes love. <laughs> Does it hit like a pile driver time? Not really. <laughs> Pile switch thing about the match. No, I, I, thought, I thought, you know, it, it, uh, both guys can work. And there's no doubt about that right here. I, I thought it was a decent match. I, I wouldn't consider it a great match, no. but decent. I liked the match. I thought it was good, uh, especially to open up the show for, yeah. for uh, WrestleMania. You got to start off hot, baby. Yeah, and I thought. Uh, I, I, I also like, like what, what, what Gorilla said, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, you know, we're getting a good view over here on Frankie's beak over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the over the beak shot. When uh, Coco Beware actually went to the uh, well too many times and tried to do a crossbody from the top rope. He did it earlier in the match and got it, but he went he went to the well too many times and tried to do it again and missed. And, yep. uh, well, Rick Martell gets him in the Boston Crab. Yep, and uh, Coco gives up. So uh, Rick Martell wins the opening match for WrestleMania six. Uh, he swims. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next match is for the WWF Tag Team Championships when the colossal connection of Andre the Giant and Haku with their manager Bobby the Brain Heenan is going to be taking on Axe and Smash of Demolition. And we're not talking about Axe and Here Comes the Smash. No, we're talking about do, do, do. Do, do, yeah, the do. shitty got their fucking, <laughs> thing, fucking anthology theme. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, you guys can watch this either on VHS, if you have the original VHS, or you can watch it on the network, or uh, if you have the uh, DVD version of the anthology, which I do, and that's the way we watch this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it let me down when I heard, when, when, uh, here comes Demolition! Do, 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 do. I go, what the fuck is yeah. this? Yeah. And, uh,. I thought this was an okay tag match. You know, uh, Haku did most of the work because yeah. Andre was too too out of shape at this time. You know, he was Andre was winding down in this time. I mean, come on, it was ninety. Yeah. And uh, and his back was hurting, and and uh, he had that great match with Hogan at WrestleMania three, and then he had to wrestle fucking WrestleMania four with Hogan, and then five he had to wrestle Jake, Jake. and and then he had to fucking put Warrior over, of course. And, you know, Andre, he didn't want to do the job for nobody. Rightfully so. Well, goddamn, I wouldn't want to be in the ring with Warrior either. I have a choice. Uh, but, uh, I'm going to be honest, I thought this uh, tag match was just okay. It was just an okay tag match. Uh, I thought it worked well with uh, Demolition taking on Haku. Uh, yeah, Haku did work most of the time. Yeah, well, he, he worked match. the whole match, basically. Uh, you know, Andre... And that shows how, the, how good Haku is. Uh, he worked the whole match. You know, he... Uh, you know, Andre choked You know, choked him with the tag rope and tried to hit him a few times yeah, in the corner. But, but he mainly stayed in the corner. But he did mainly but stay in the corner. But he did come out for a few minutes and... But he he actually gets out gets into the ring and uh, Haku accidentally does the uh, does the uh, karate kick to him. Yep, and uh, Andre's tied up in the ropes and Bobby's trying to get him untied from the ropes and then fucking uh, demolition sets up Haku with the big uh, backbreaker elbow combination. Yeah, the double team and uh, one two three they beat Haku and the new WWF tag team champions is Demolition. For th for the third time. Yeah, for the third time. Yeah. Uh, Pops, what you think about the match? I, I, I thought the mat match was was you know uh, uh, good. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, Haku, like you guys said, you know, he 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 did the whole match really. Mm -hmm. uh, but Andre, he you know he he got in there you know and he did what Andre does. 
-hmm. And you know that that's about all. Tangled all you can up say. in the rope spot. Yeah, yeah, that's about all you can say because that right there time. What else was he to do? Well, uh, <coughs> Bobby the Brain Heenan starts yelling at Andre. Yeah. Saying that you cost you you cost us the victory. Well, how, how the Haku fuck was, can't do well, it. Hold on, hold on. How the fuck was it Andre's fault when Haku kicked him? Well, in, in, in fucking in the inventor of the mutton chops, <laughs> Andre the Giant. And well, Bobby made the mistake of slapping Andre. Yep, and uh, Andre with the worst uh, paintbrush slaps I've ever seen. Yeah, he he, he grabs Bobby and then goes like this and barely slaps him. Yeah. And then fucking beats, and then Haku tries to uh, fucking save Bobby, and then fucking Haku and Bobby try to get in the ring cart, and fucking, and fucking Haku grab, uh, fucking Andre grabs Haku. Headbutt. Slew you <laughs> <slew off, laughs> yeah. And big headbutt, and then fucking Andre takes the ring cart by himself here, in his dark blue singlet. Oh, no, 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 And why Bobby go, what the hell you do? Uh, 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 a good pop for Andre. Yeah, yeah it was. Well, it was a good pop for Andre, if, yeah. If, if, if Andre wants to ride by himself, Andre's going to ride by himself. And, of course, Haku and Bobby had to walk. Yeah, of course they did. Because <laughs> you're going to have the boss ride in the, uh, ride in the ring, yes. pot, uh, ring cart. Uh, as we get into the next match, it is the Mighty Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be yep. taking on the guy who... Who uh, demolishes buildings and the devastation, the earthquake with Jimmy Hobb, baby? Uh, you remember the? Uh, well, of course, this was after the main event. Remember, uh, fucking, fucking earthquake was wearing those poopy brown fucking singlets. Yeah. Oh I God, wasn't that. that terrible? <laughs> he, how well, about, I, I, I think earthquake. that's where Sean got the goddamn fucking poopy brown pants. <laughs> when I think about uh, earthquake, I think about the blue singlet. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, which he was wearing. So. Uh. What'd you guys think about this match? To be honest, all this match was about was to get Earthquake over. This was a typical squash match. That's what it was. It was what it was. Poor Hercules. <laughs> Fucking uh, Hercules got a few offensive in. He busted uh, Earthquake's mouth. Yeah. And uh, fucking Jimmy Hardy, you're bleeding, baby. <laughs> you're bleeding. You go in there and give it. And fucking... Then, and then fucking uh, Hercules tries the torture rack on Earthquake. Earthquake elbows him in the back of the neck. Then he goes Her down. Yeah, Hercules goes down. Two big elbow drops. And then he does the fucking Earthquake uh, sit down. Yes. Balls in the face of the mighty Hercules. <laughs> yes. One, two, three, and Earthquake. Gets the win here over the mighty Hercules. Well, uh, Earthquake wasn't done because he done it again. Yeah, he done it again. It was the aftershock. <laughs> here comes the aftershock. Balls right in the face. Again. Yep, balls number two in the face. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I I thought Earthquake was pretty good big man. To yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Hercules was a strong motherfucker. Yeah, I'm about to say Hercules was an okay worker. And see, this is the thing about it too. Is it didn't it didn't hurt Hercules because nah. at the end. Uh, the referee was trying to get him up, and he pushed the referee yeah. back, yeah. and Hercules stood up. Yeah, on Hercules his own. got up on his own. So you know, it, it, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't really hurt Hercules, but uh, you know, it is what it is. It, it Pops, is, what, what uh, you think about that I, match? I thought it was an okay match. You know, like, like Tommy said, you know, he, he was built to get, you know, uh, uh, the big guy over. Oh yeah, earthquake. Uh, so you know, uh, and and it, and it did, didn't hurt Hercules a bit, you know. Uh, Earthquake got the win, which is the way it's supposed to go, and you know he he Hercules saved face because he didn't he didn't get no help getting up, so it didn't hurt neither one of them. Next match, guys, is when Brutus the Barber. Oh my God! Beefcake. You know it goes downhill when Brutus is on the card. <laughs> He's going to take with grenades in his pockets. <laughs> He's going to be taking on Mister Perfect. Yeah. Now, uh, with the genius. With the genius, Lanny Poffo, with the fucked up hair. Yep. Because uh, he already got the hair clipping once. Uh, now, this match shows how damn good Mr. Perfect was. Yeah, but fucking, he oversold everything fucking Brutus the fucking Barber Beefcake did. And to be honest, I didn't give a fuck about Brutus. Uh, all I cared about was Mr. Perfect selling his shit. Oh, yeah, he, he, uh, he made... 
uh, Mr. Perfect made Brutus look like a million yeah. bucks in this yeah. fucking match. And he, I'm not kidding. Go back and watch this match. He oversold almost everything fucking yes. Brutus came at him with. Uh, e even to the point where he came in with the fucking uh, hedge clipper yeah. right in the beginning. And you see Perfect take the tumble right. outside. Uh, Over that top rope right down to the floor. Uh, oversold him like uh, trying to get Beefcake over. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hell of a job, too. Uh, but it ends when uh, Beefcake does a slingshot into the corner and uh, Mr. Perfect hits his head right on the uh, uh, ring post. Yep, and his foot got caught in the rope there. <laughs> yeah, he goes. <laughs> and uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake pins fucking Mr. Perfect. Gives him his first loss. That's pretty sad. Yeah, th this is actually the first televised loss of uh, of Mr. Perfect. Uh, he, You know, at this point he was undefeated on yeah. television. Uh, so Brutus the Barber Beefcake is the first guy to beat Mr. Perfect. So he's going to, he's going to clip, uh, sorry, he, he's going to sever Mr. Perfect's perfect record. You know how he got that win, don't you? With, <clears throat> with a perfect clip. You know how Brutus got that win, don't you? So, he's Hogan's friend. Hogan and friends. <laughs> it's true. That's how he probably got the fucking win. No doubt. Uh, Piles, what did you think about the match? Uh, well, uh, uh, <coughs> did what he was supposed to do. He sold that motherfucker. I would have sold for shit. But that's just me. But, you know, it, it, it just showed, you know, and you, like you said, it, it, it made BK look like a fucking million dollars the, 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 the way Kurt sold every goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have did it, but it just showed how much you know that Kurt Henning was that damn good. And he was that damn good. Yes, he was. And uh, he tried to, uh, he, he he was going to cut uh, Mr. Perfect's hair. Yeah, but Mr. Perfect fucking took powder after that. Well, well, the genius grabs the grabs the clippers and yeah. stuff, and, 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 and finally, finally, Mr. Perfect wakes up and then he gets, gets out of there. Well, uh, you know, if you if you'd have been Mr. Perfect, would you have stayed there? Hell no, I took a powder too. I wouldn't. <laughs> But uh, uh, he, he he grabs Lenny. Well, of course he grabs fucking the genius. <laughs> Hold on, Lenny. <laughs> Throws him in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> the genius is trying to escape. And then fucking uh, and then fucking Brutus puts the boringest hold on the man that Brutus will put you to sleep. <laughs> the sleep uh, roll, uh, Tommy. And, get, 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 and fucking, give us a range and, engine. And, fuck, and fucking there's the sleep roll. Goddamn the genius. He's doing the fucking swim. <laughs> He's doing the swim. Uh, Jimmy and, shake. Uh, and, uh, to no avail, of course, Genius is out, so... Yep, and, uh, Brutus shaves his fucking head, and oh, well, cuts, his, cuts his fucking hair, and no one gave a fuck like I did <laughs> Uh, because I didn't give a fuck about Brutus Beefcake. Any, anytime he was on the card, I fell asleep, so... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a Brutus Beefcake fan. No, you, you didn't have I to understand. use the sleeper on me. I fell asleep, I fell asleep when he first I came fell out. Asleep. I fell asleep, I fell asleep on most of his matches. <laughs> Go go watch the disciple in, in yeah. two thousand. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I, you know I just don't I just, I just don't, don't think he was you know he was all that goddamn great. Uh, yeah, it, it was pretty sad to see Beefcake actually in uh, Kurt's uh, Kurt's winning streak on fucking. Uh, to be honest, yeah, it was on WWF. You know, I I think you know it, 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 it was meant meant for 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 him to lose. It already been on fuck on on the fucking TV, not not in the fucking big main event. Well, the big WrestleMania six here. And, uh, guys, we are going to be right back uh, as we get into yes. uh, the next segment. We'll be right back, baby. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back to WrestleMania 6. That's right. Because uh, WrestleMania is so big, guys, we have to do it in parts. Yeah. But uh, you guys won't see that because, well, I'm going to be adding it together yeah. in one big video for you guys. Uh, next, guys, we have... Bad News Brown, who's already in the ring. Well, of course he is. <laughs> uh, he's well, bad News don't give a shit, though, you know. That's the thing. He's going to be taking on Roddy Rowdy, or Rowdy Roddy Piper, excuse me. Um, this stemmed off well. Their little feud that they had at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Where both of them uh, pretty much got knocked over and they were just fighting each other and uh, just brawling each other. Yep. And uh, what'd you think about uh, <laughs> Bad, New Brown, uh, Bad News Brown's uh, promo on uh, Oh yeah, fucking uh, saying, Piper. saying that skirt you're wearing, you should be shaving your legs and all that, yeah. Your bony legs. Um, the one question I have about this match is, well, the promo also with, uh, with Roddy Piper... Yeah. Uh, 
him being uh, half black. Yeah, you won't get away with that in 2019. Uh, no, you won't get away with that in 2019. Yeah, uh, butt hurt going on there. Now, you know, there is some confusion on, on why he's half black. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's more uh, more uh, more uh, black than fucking uh, Bad News Brown. I don't know <laughs> what the fuck he's trying to say here. But did you like the promo, though? Yeah, the promo was great. <laughs> the match wasn't. With his big bug eyes. <laughs> and going to pop right on them sockets. <laughs> And the other part is your mouth. I'm going to shut it for you, baby. <laughs> I'm going to shut it for you, baby. And the match, not so much. This match sucked. Yeah. Uh, why was Danny Davis holding both of them back well, in this match? I don't match? know. But, like I said, to me... If you're going to have a match, you're going to go against each other. Why hold them back? I don't well, know. I didn't well, that. like I said, to me, this match sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and, and, why did you get, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested. These guys were not wrestlers. These guys were pounders anyway. Mm -hmm. it, it, you might as well know when, when they met. It was not going to be a wrestling match. It was going to be fists, kicks, and everything else. They were going to pound each other because that much is what they're known for. So, Danny Davis in there just, just trying to separate them, which was a stupid, foolish shit. Well, see, um, and the reason why this match wasn't that good was because, well, of the finish. Yeah, well, well, and because they didn't have good chemistry in this match, in my eyes. Um, you know, uh, they built this thing up, and to me, I just don't think it lived up any hype. Well, well here's the thing. I, I thought Bad News Brown and Roddy Piper had bad chemistry. Uh, Roddy Piper has the white glove, I guess Michael Jackson reference, I well, assume. Yeah. Uh, bad News Brown hits Piper with a chair, or tries to, it yeah. attempts to, and uh, they get... Uh, they get Count it out, both of them on the outside. Yeah, so it's a double count out, and they just fight backstage and shit. Yeah, they're fighting each other down the ramp, and that's that's yeah. the end of this match. Like I said, I thought this match sucked. It was yeah, uh, because nothing nothing got settled anyway. Uh, yeah, nothing got settled, nothing got resolved. That's the way it was. Next match, oh, I've been looking forward to this one, baby. We have. The Hart Foundation of Jim the Anvil Nightheart and Brett the Hitman Hart as they take on the guys who just was trying to sing the uh, Russian National Anthem with uh, Steve Martin in the back. Steve Allen. Uh, Steve Allen, excuse me, not Steve Martin. Uh, oh, Steve that. Martin sucks, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you on yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, excuse me, Steve Allen. Uh, and, uh, well, there was, uh, you know, I tried to sing in the shower, but it didn't work out. Well. Of the Bolsheviks of Nikolai Volkov. And Boris Zukov. Yeah, um, you want to tell you what I thought of this match too? What? Shits. <laughs> uh, I liked it just because on how no, short No, you want to tell you, well, that's the only reason I liked it, motherfucker. Think what'd, you think about, what'd you think about the Bolsheviks coming out with no music? <laughs> with no shock. With no shock to me. Yeah, fucking, uh, I'm going to be honest, I, I thought this match sucked too. Because, well, I'm glad it was short, so I didn't have to fucking yeah. grin and bear it for a fucking hour. <laughs> grin and bear it. You know. And, uh, but... Like I said, Alan, 2019 WWE Hall of Famers here, the Hart Foundation. No doubt, uh, going into Hall of Fame 2019. Yep. and um, I'm going to be honest, like, that's the only thing I enjoyed about this match. It was short and sweet and to the point. Uh, short, sweet, and to the point when the Bolsheviks were uh, trying yeah. to sing the uh, Russian National Anthem, or, Keith, or at least Nikolai yeah. was. And fucking uh, Jim Neihart and fucking Bray Hart attack the Bolsheviks. Fucking Nikolai takes a big old bump up and over the top rope. Uh, fucking uh, Bell rings. Yeah, bell rings, fucking Jim Neihart's holding fucking, uh, fucking Boris Zukov while they still got the USSR fucking, uh, shitty jacket on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, uh, <coughs> Bret Hart hits the big clothesline. Heart Bret, attack. Heart attack. Bret looks at the camera, one, two, three, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and that's the end of this fucking match. Yes. Uh, yeah, hey, that's enough said there. Enough said to get the Hart Foundation over. That's all it was. Beat the Bolsheviks. <laughs> Pops. Uh, uh, it, it, it was what it was. It, it, it was fast and... Easy match. It, it, it was the kind of match that, baby, I'm coming home early. <laughs> Might as well. Uh, next match is when the Big Barbarian with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Who bought his contract from Mr. Fuji. <laughs> yeah. I guess he's trying to save for that Berserker money. <laughs> how did that plan out? <laughs> In the Berserker fucking shitty boots. Yeah, how, how did that plan out? Uh, the Barbarian is going to be taking on... Arriba! 
Tito Santana, or, yes. or or as Jesse Ventura called him, Chico Santana. Chico. <laughs> yeah. And you know, look at, look at that, Chico. You know, Barbarian's already in the ring course. You know, yeah. Bobby Heenan. Fucking Tito's on the mic with Gene Oakley. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to, I know the Barbarian's big and strong, but Arriba! <laughs> Arriba! Yeah, and fuck you, here comes, here comes Tito in the, in the ring. Yeah, with the Chico music. Yeah, with the Chico music. And fucking, um, we're talking about Chico and Sanford and Son music here. You know, here, here he's in the goddamn fucking, sh the ring cart. Arriba! <laughs> yeah, that's what Tito, that's what Chico does. That's all the way down to, all the way down to the ring. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, fucking... Uh, fucking fuck Jesse, Jesse, Jesse is killing me. Called him Chico. You know, fucking here, here goes Tito Santana. I know, I know, I caught some in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, right there from Chico himself. <laughs> maybe the barbarian. Maybe uh, Chico could have got a win already. Already in this match, he could have gave fucking barbarian some of them burritos. <laughs> Chico's revenge. <laughs> Chico. Two minutes in the match, fucking barbarian would take a powder and win back out now. <laughs> Some classic stuff in my opinion. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, the thing have is... Have you ever had one of their enchiladas? <laughs> Grow a lot soon. I like that food, but that food doesn't like me. Yeah. I'll be honest, I thought this was a pretty decent uh, match between Barbarian and Tito. Uh, Tito and the Strike Force gear still. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but the thing is about it is Tito's one of those guys who can work with almost anybody. Yeah. And get them over. Yeah. Uh, and I, I always liked Tito. Yeah, I did too. I, I always liked yeah. Tito Santana. Uh, but uh, Barbarian uh, gets hit with the with the flying burrito yep. arm. The flying forearm. forearm. And uh, Bobby distracts uh Well, uh, first he Tito. puts uh, Tito's going for the cover. Bobby uh, puts his foot, Barbarian's foot on the rope. Yeah, and uh, well, well, Tito didn't like that too much. No. Nope. And uh, he's going to go after um, Bobby, and uh, Barbarian grabs him, uh, and eventually he, he counters it, and Barbarian says, fuck it, I'm going to ram him into the rope. Yep, and Tito's throat ran it into the top rope. Barbarian climbs to the top rope. A devastating clothesline <laughs> takes Tito Santana's head off Yes, with that clothesline. One, two, three, and the Barbarian gets the win here. At WrestleMania 6 over Tito Santana in a pretty decent little match, actually. Gotta give Tito credit for that clothesline. He sold it yes. like, like his fucking head flew yeah, off. Yeah, I'm be honest. I thought this was a pretty decent little match, actually. Pretty decent little match. Uh, Pops, what you think about the I, I, I thought Tito? It was, I thought it was a decent, decent match. I mean, uh, Tito, he did what he what he set out to do. He, he, he got the Barbarian over. Uh -huh. and uh, Big, strong motherfucker. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, Tito, that was, that was, that was his basic job. That right there, day. I'm gonna get you over, and whatever happens after that right there, which not, not, not much happened after that right there with the the barbarian. So there you go. <laughs> Next match, we're gonna be having. Uh, oh, you've been waiting for this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> one of the first ever uh, intergender uh, mixed tag team matches. Yeah. Uh, when the Macho King Randy Savage and his queen. Sensational Sherry takes on Dusty Rhodes and Sweet Sapphire. Yes. Uh, now, Tommy, uh, why don't you give us a demonstration on uh, on Dusty Rhodes' theme song on the, on the anthology? Well, well, first let's <laughs> do the great Dusty promo here. Dusty <laughs> getting this fucking mixed tag over the best he can. Try to. Try. No disrespect to Savage Sherry or uh, Dusty or Sapphire, but yeah. come on, this match was not that good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's pretty sad that a Savage match is not that good, and it's pretty sad that a Dusty match is not that good. Uh, yeah. But it was what it was. It was a mixed tag, for God's sake. Yeah. And, you know, Dusty... Name a, n n name a mixed tag that was yeah. a good match. Yeah, yeah. 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 match that was any of that fucking good anyway. But this was the first one. What, what about the promo of Dusty? Oh, Dusty, you know, he's wearing the goddamn fucking polka yellow... Dots. The yellow and black polka dot shirt. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. You know, you got sweet sapphire... Ain't gonna be on no throne pretending to be queen. And you ain't gonna see the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, baby, the common man, sitting on the throne trying to be king. <laughs> We're common folks. 
And we got some that the Macho Man. Yeah, you know what you miss missing, Sherry and Macho King? You're missing the Crown Jewel. We're not talking about the shitty Crown Jewel pay-per-view. Yeah, we're not talking about the you shitty know. goddamn house show and goddamn yeah, Saudi yeah, Arabia right. Crown Jewel. We, we, we ain't talking about that Crown Jewel. That's Crown shit. That's Crown shit. We're talking about the Crown Jewel, baby. The crown Jewel, baby. Uh, and uh, Dusty Rhodes comes out. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah. You know, Dusty and Sapphire doing the dance in the goddamn ring cart. And what does he come out with? The newlywed. The fucking, the fucking let's make a deal thing. Do, 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 do. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> do, 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 yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 do. Leave the themes alone. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and he comes out and he says, we're going to be bringing out the crown jewel, baby. Yeah. And who comes out on the ring cart? It's Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth waving to the crowd, coming out to the Macho Man theme, of oh, course. Well, but. That's the only music <laughs> she came out to. No doubt. So, uh, Miss Elizabeth is in the corner of, uh, Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire. Yeah. And, uh, what'd you guys say about this match? Okay. Like I said, this match was not that good. And it's pretty sad that a Dusty and a Sapphire. Well, see, the, match. The, yeah, the, the, the worst part about it is everybody in this match, with the exception of, with the exception of Sapphire. Yeah. And the exception of, of Miss Elizabeth. All of them were great workers. Yeah. Macho yeah. Man Randy Savage, uh, Dusty Rhodes, and... Sherry as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh... And here's the thing. When Sherry and Sapphire got in, you could tell fucking Sapphire didn't know what the fuck she was doing. Yeah. No disrespect to Sapphire, but it's true. Truth. And, uh, and Sherry was working around her. Yeah. You no know, bumping for her. Because she has to. You know, and everything else. And, but when Dusty and Savage got in, even, I thought they were doing just fine. You know, and then, and of course, the women will get involved. Fucking Sapphire will go after Savage, and Sherry will go after Rhodes, and, yep. Uh, but, uh, it ends when, well, uh, Sherry's distracted by Miss Elizabeth. Yes, and Miss Elizabeth grabs Sherry, throws her on uh, Sapphire, who's on all fours, so. She trips over. Yeah, trips over, uh, Sherry trips over Sapphire. This word, the world's most shittiest roll up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. Sapphire's just holding her legs. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. Well, that's true. Yes. Just holding Sherry's legs. Yep. One, two, three. And Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire get the win here at WrestleMania six in the first ever mixed tag match. And uh, and they made history. Macho King ain't too happy about it. No, he goes in. <laughs> fucking Sa Dusty just crotches him in the goddamn ribs and. He takes the scepter. Yeah, takes the, the crown jewel scepter here. <laughs> Holds it up. Then, and then fucking Dusty, Miss Elizabeth, and uh, Sapphire get down. Dusty doing the dance there. <laughs> yeah. The only one that could get polka dots over. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, 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 they all three dance. Uh, you know, once again, not, not not your you know yeah. not 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 a not a five star no, match. Ain't no, but, ain't no Dave, it ain't no five-star match, right, right. even though you think everyone's a fucking five-star match. But I will say that I enjoyed the match. Yeah, I'm saying, like I said, the match was not that good, but it was enjoyable to watch. It was, you know, a good thing to see, uh, especially, you know, in 2019 when everybody in the match has already passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very but, sad. Pops, anything you uh, want to add to this? I, th I, thought, I thought it was a decent match. Um, I mean, they, they gave what, what, they, what they intended to do anyway. And uh, you know, watching that right there, you know, and you, you you look at them, you know, back in that right there day, you know, oh man, what what talent, what what talent, you know, has has been lost, and that right there is really what I was thinking about watching it. No so, doubt. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna be right back with part three, and we hope that you yes. guys enjoy it. And we hope you keep on enjoying, baby. Hello, and welcome back to the uh, WrestleMania Six review. That's right, guys. We are back with WrestleMania Six. Um, we already did part one. We're yep. gonna go to part yep. two, uh, but you guys will see this edited together, yeah. so it ain't gonna be uh, as bad. Next is uh, we have numerous interviews with everybody: Demolition, uh, Macho Man. Basically, all this was was a fucking intermission. intermission. Basically, yeah. We did. Time to go get the hot dog. And uh, you have the Hulk Hogan interview. Yep. Uh, how you know this is where the power lies and. And then you have the whole, uh, uh, the, the the Ultimate Warrior promo about yeah. uh, you know moons and stars and typical Ultimate Warrior yeah. promo yeah you know same, same shit different day <laughs> it, you know it it, it it was there to have promo interviews um, next match is well the popcorn spot right yeah right back from intermission yep.
we have the Orient Express of, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Sato. Yeah. And uh, Tanaka. Tanaka with Mr. Fuji. As they take on the Rockers, Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels. And, uh, and you could see the people running back to their seats. <laughs> I would be. Yeah. yeah. Well, consider I'm a big Shawn Michaels fan. So it was. Yeah, one guy. Uh, I, 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 a lot of people weren't Shawn Michaels fans when he was I, I think in the background, a guy lost the hot dog. He probably went, oh, damn. <laughs> oh, damn. But, uh, of course, uh, as usual, they get a lot of heat on Marty. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. Beating the shit out of Marty most of the match. And uh, Mr. Fuji uses his cane quite a bit in this match. Uh, hits uh, uh, Marty in the, in the side with yep. it and in the back. And... Uh, when he gets the cane taken away by Sean, uh, and the referee's trying to get Sean back onto the apron, uh, Sato ends up throwing salt right into uh, Marty's eyes. Yes. And <laughs> well, Marty Gennetti was about to hit Mr. Fuji with the cane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Miss, and Sato fucking, Sato, Sato, whatever the fuck his fucking name is. How do you like that? I don't care, really. Uh, and, and fucking, uh, shows fucking salt in his eyes, and fucking Marty falls over the barricade, clotheslines himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and 10 count, count out. Yeah, he got to count out because he can't see, he can't get into the ring because of the salt in his eyes. I'm going to be honest, this match was not that stellar. <sighs> no, uh, considering how many times... Look, I enjoyed their fucking Royal Rumble 91 match. Was that with, 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 with yeah, Kato? Yeah, I enjoyed with that Paul match Diamond. better. <laughs> yeah. I, no, really, I enjoyed that match better. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Sato sucked. Uh, Orient Express and the and the Rockers had better matches than this one. Yeah, this one was not that fucking good. So uh, the Orient Express with Mr. Fuji wins by a count out. Uh, anything else? Uh, for yeah, that's about uh, it for it, me. It was just it was just shitty. That's it. Next match is when the Canadian strongman Dino Bravo with Earthquake and Jimmy Hart, baby. Yep. Takes on a hacksaw Jim Duggan. Now, of course, you know. And you know it's funny. He's coming out with the American he's flag. He's coming out with the American flag and doing USA, and we're in fucking Canada. Yeah, we're in Canada. And no one gave a fuck. Yeah. And the crab, and, and I've seen some Dino Bravo signs, but that was because they're in Canada. Yeah. And, you know, the Canadian strongman, right? Yep. Yep. And no disrespect, I didn't like this match either. I thought this match sucked too. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dino wasn't really known to have great matches, let's just be honest. Yeah. And come and, on, he's wearing baby blue. You know how far <laughs> that's going to get you. And Duggan, well... well D Duggan, Duggan was Duggan. Duggan. Duggan, yeah, was Duggan. was Duggan, yeah. And uh, he eventually gets his 2 by 4 in the ring because of Jimmy Hart's distraction. Hits Dino, and Dino falls the opposite way. Yep, and, uh, <laughs> he gets hit in the back, and then he falls back. Yep, and Duggan pins Dino Bravo. One, two, three. And then Earthquake beats the shit out of Duggan. Yep. Yep. Hits the big Earthquake, sit down a couple of three times. times. Yeah, three times. Did you see Duggan's eyes cross when he hit it, when he did it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Duggan, oh, Duggan with the cross eyes. Well, I thought Duggan's eyes always cross. <laughs> Sometimes it's funny when he takes a bump. <laughs> like slick. Let that be a lesson to you, crooked eye. Oh, I like Hacksaw, though, but this match just was not that good. But Hacksaw, Duggan does win over Dino yeah, Bravo yeah. in this match. Uh, anything else you guys want to do? He paid a heavy price. <laughs> Next match is actually... Unofficially for the million dollar championship. <laughs> when the champion, the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase with his bodyguard Virgil coming to a different table near you. <laughs> you mean Lonely Virgil. Lonely Virgil. <laughs> as he takes on Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake the Snake Roberts. And what did you guys think about Roberts' promo before this match? Great fucking promo. You know, yeah. people could use that money for essentials. But what did you do? You humiliated. You embarrassed. You him. humbled them. You humbled them. Well, you know what? Now you're going to be the one to be eliminated, uh, humiliated. You're going to be the one who grubbles for, <laughs> for the, the money. money and how appropriate. <laughs> when the money you're grubbing for is your very own. I, I enjoyed that great promo by Jake. I, I, Longfellow I, couldn't said it better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's true. That I mean, that was a great promo. I mean, I mean, he, 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 and and you know, Jake, to me, you know, when when he did a promo, he he always took it from the heart to me. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I thought this was a great match. It was I, a good match. I, it was a very underrated match. I thought Ted DiBiase and Jake Roberts put on a really good match. Uh, very, very great match. Uh, <laughs> it ends when uh, Ted has the million dollar dream on yep. uh, 
Jake on the outside, and uh, he runs into the corner, yep. into the corner post. And uh, they're both down there on the outside, and Virgil grabs Ted and throws him back in the ring. Yep, and uh, Ten Count. Ten Count. And uh, so Ted DiBiase retains the million dollar belt. He got it back. And the funny thing is, you know, uh, Jesse and, and Gorilla were talking about, well, it's not, a, it's not a real official title yeah. of the WWF. You can actually win this belt uh, via count out yeah. or, uh, or any other way, you know. Yeah. So uh, I guess that was a good way for yeah. Ted to retain the belt, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah you know, it was, it, 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 it was what it was. I mean, it was a good match. Uh, I liked it, you know, so... Uh, Virgil grabs the championship, starts running, and uh, <laughs> Ted DiBiase. Well, uh, in the in the in the thing of that is is uh, money gets uh, knocked out yep. into the ring by Virgil because uh, 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 Roberts hit him. Yep, and then he hit the DDT on. Uh, <laughs> and I love how Ted DiBiase sold that DDT. Yeah. <laughs> Great DDT yes. by Ted. Uh, so, so Ted's laying there, and Jake picks up the money, which he'll probably sell for crack. And yeah. <laughs> back in this day, yeah, yeah. back in his day. But I'm he goes out. He goes out to certain ringsides, hands them. Of course, like bills. Mary Tyler Moore needs a hundred. <laughs> yeah, Mary Tyler Moore gets a hundred. She goes. Yeah. <laughs> when she gets I can't hundred. wait to get to her in a second. Yeah. Oh, we will. The best best part about it to me was the part of the story behind. You know, it, it, they, they 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 feuded over over, the, over that belt and everything. You know, it had, it had a story behind it, and I yeah. like that part. And he grabs the one, the last one hundred dollar bill and shows it in Ted's mouth. <laughs> yep. To <laughs> humiliate Ted DiBiase. Then uh, Virgil comes in. I got to back to for five hundred dollars. Yeah, Virgil comes back and saves Ted, and uh, and that's about the end of that. Yeah, because Roberts was about to bring out yep. Damien. So only Virgil come out and save him. Next match, guys. A uh, pretty good match, guys. Let's actually yeah. check that one out. Next match, we have Hakeem, the African Dream. With the Slickster, the Doctor of the Style Slick, coming out to a shitty theme. Yeah. It was it wasn't jazz, so no, bro. No. Hell, I'd go to I'd go to hear goddamn the the the, the one man games uh, uh, music. As he takes on his former partner and the big boss man coming out from to his 1999 theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where the fuck is Cobb County, Georgia? Yeah, that's the like, one I yeah. want to hear. Damn it. Um, and this match came about because uh, Big Boss Man was going to take the money of Ted DiBiase, and yeah. <laughs> and here I came, just take the money, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's how this match came about. But Ted attacks Boss Man when he gets down to the yep. ringside because he stayed at the apron there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I think he was underneath the ring. Well, he was by the apron, partly underneath yeah. the ring. He attacks Boss Man. And then throws Boss Man in the ring, and the King starts beating the shit out of him. Yeah, it was a... It, it, Short match, though. Short match. You know, Boss Man makes a comeback. Whips Big Akeem to the ropes. Big Boss Man slam. One, two, three. And the Big Boss Man gets the win here over Akeem. But short I love match. the way Gorilla Very short it. match. Yes, that ain't nothing but a mugging. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh... <laughs> you didn't wait for this one. Oh, yes. Uh... Sean Mooney comes out and interviews a couple of fans. Yeah, he, he yeah, yeah. Sean Mooney comes in and interviews a couple of fans. Ah, uh, Hunky Talk Man Grandma, they can't do anything. They can't Remember do that nothing. Little kid? Yeah. Yeah. They, can't, they can't do nothing. They're stupid. Yeah, some <laughs> shit like that. And then, yeah. and then they go, you know the name of the song? Hunka, 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 Hunka Love. Right, hey, little kid. Close enough. And then he, 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 of course, Tyler he came Moore. over to that area just because of Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, Mary Tyler yeah. Moore was there. Uh, well, what do you think of Greg Valentine and uh, and Rhythm and Blues? How about that? <laughs> yeah, how about that? How about that? Uh, what you do you think? know what else? To Are say? you enjoying WrestleMania Six? Yeah, the athletics is the theater. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. This ain't fucking acting, okay? This is fucking wrestling. Okay? No, but my foot was the funny part. <laughs> What do you think about Greg being with him? How about it? How about it? Fucking terrible. <laughs> like she knows. Yeah, yeah. Like she knows. Who the fuck's Greg Valentine? I'm just here because I'm a celebrity. And I don't know shit about wrestling. I'm just here because Vince McMahon told me to get here. <laughs> Next we have we have the pink Cadillac driving down and the chauffeur is... Diamond Dallas Page. DDP. <laughs> DDP is driving. 
the Honky Tonk Man, Greg Valentine, Jimmy Hart, Hart and some fucking uh, fucking fifties ring rats. <laughs> the and, ha- uh, the Hall yeah. Cats. And here's the thing. Rats. Here's the here's the thing that these people should know. That was uh, uh, DDP's, DDP's pink, pink pink Cadillac. Cadillac. Yes, it was. Uh, and they come out and they sing their new hit single. Yep. Honka, honka, honka. Oh, um, Greg was getting into it. Man. <laughs> Greg Valentine was getting me into it. Give, <laughs> give us a little. Greg <laughs> yeah. like, what the fuck is he saying? And then there's yeah, Greg I, I, fucking playing there's the Greg fucking guitar. Playing the guitar. Yeah, I, fucking I, the only one that was fucking doing anything remotely good was Jimmy Hart and fucking Honky. Yeah. yeah. And the Honkettes. Fucking Greg's just there in his fucking shitty guy. Because, because we, we, I'm going to tell you something. We, we, you know, we, we, we see it, you know. We watched it, we, we watched it before. We, we watched it. I, I, I like WrestleMania. I love it. For multiple reasons. And, and I was like, I, I, I looked at the boys and I was like, what what the fuck did he say? Nobody, and, nobody knew. Tommy and Joe was like, well, hell, I don't know. You just listen to it. What did you hear? Absolutely positively nothing. And there was a couple of people selling some stuff. And he goes, no, nah, we're just selling honky talk music today. He yeah, goes, that's <laughs> Luke. That's Butch. The Bushwhackers. And then, and then the rhythm and blues and all them powder out and... And the Bushwhackers uh, fucking destroy the Honk Tonk Man and Greg Valentine's guitars. And then they, and they start doing the fucking yeah. thing. And, and, of, and of course, everybody by ringside, everybody's seen it doing the fucking uh, yeah. the Bushwhackers. And even though people say they don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, they did their job. No doubt. Yeah. I, I figure, you know, that, that's sad, though, you know, people saying something like that. Because if you're good enough to get people to follow you, you've done your fucking job. Next match, we have... The ravishing one, ravishing Rick Rude with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Yes, as he takes on Superfly Jimmy Snooker. Um, you know, uh, this match, you know, wasn't fantastic. No, it was not. Um, you will tell you the other thing, Steve Allen on commentary. Yeah. Uh, I like Jimmy Snooker. He's wearing the same tights my my wife wears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, him and her wearing the same uh, the same underwear, the same the same lippers scared underwear. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, you know, it was what it was. This yeah. this match was to climb mainly calm down, get re- get Rick Rude over, uh, get Rick Rude over, and also calm down the crowd yeah. for well the main uh, event. Yeah, for the main event. Um, but uh, Jimmy Snooker, well, he gets Rude Awakening. Yep. Yep. Fucking Snooker gets caught in the Rude Awakening. Rube covers him one, two, three. Snooker gets up, no sells that shit, <laughs> and leaves the ring. Yeah, one, two, three, kick out. Then he sits up, and then he gets up, yeah. and then he leaves. Yeah. I go, what the fuck, Snooker? At least sell it. Yeah, at least sell the son of a bitch. He didn't even sell it. Uh, but uh, yeah, like uh, I said, the match was just there to get Rick Rude over. Uh, it, it was. Well, just... at, the, at, at, at this point, Snooker already had his big run. Yeah. And... Yeah. He was winding down and yeah. becoming the, the guy to get people yeah. over. He was, you know, that, that, that that's what I say too. He, he, actually, he, it was to get the root over, and, and they just threw it in there. It, it was nothing about a few. It was nothing about anything except get the root, get root over. That's a that's the bottom line of that one. And now, guys, what you guys been waiting for? The main event of WrestleMania six. It is champion versus champion, title for title. When the world, when the World Wrestling Federation champion Hulk Hogan takes on the WWF Intercontinental Champion, the Ultimate Warrior, in the Ultimate Challenge. Yeah. And uh Tommy. Yeah. Both these guys actually walked to the what well, yes. well, 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 Warrior ran to the ring, ring and blown yeah. up. Yeah he, no he shock yeah. He, of course he was blown up. And he blown up on everything. <laughs> and Every Hogan, time he ran he did. And Hogan walked to the ring which uh, Which is rare because w- 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 everyone usually uses yeah. the ring cards. Everybody used the ring cards except for well, honky and fucking yeah. and, you know the, the honky talk man segment where oh, they use the well, card. Well, they never use the card. Uh, but everybody used the ring cards, but them, and I understand why. You know, got to build anticipation for this match. And of course, you know, Ultimate Warrior is blown up because that was a long fucking way to the ring there. Yeah, I'd be blown up too <laughs> running that fo- running all the way fucking. Yeah, and of course you got the epic stare downs. Yes. Uh, the epic match. stare downs of Warrior yeah. and Hogan. Uh, you know, uh, you know, this match wasn't like <coughs> a great, great match, but it's a more iconic match. Uh, you know, these guys are some of the very best and most popular wrestlers at this time yeah. frame in the WWF, 
and to see these guys face off, and it's it and it's is, the first time that a face and face fought at WrestleMania. Yeah, it, uh, for, it, for, it, for it was. It, it was the first, first time that much this that this that that was ever done, and and man, it, it, you know, pe people's minds were blown. Oh my God, they're they're really going to go at it. You know, once again, not one of your Dave Meltzer typical yeah. five star matches. I'll be honest, I thought this was a good match. But when you go back and you think about it, this is one of Warrior's best matches of all time. No, one of the best to me. The only matches I have seen Warrior actually have. It was the match with Hogan at WrestleMania six, the match Savage with, at seven, and the matches with Rick Rude. Yes. Those are the only three best matches I've seen Warrior ever have in his whole career. I'm being honest. Yes. I'm being honest, and I'm not a Warrior fan. I'm just telling the fucking truth because you all know that there ain't no fucking five star Ultimate Warrior matches. Yeah. Uh, Versus Terry Gibbs. Yeah. Fuck that <laughs> match too. Yeah. Er, er, no, there was there were his best feuds and the best matches. Mm -hmm. And of course he was in there with the ones that actually well Hogan don't know how to work that much either, but. Good, good, good crowd plays for that. Well, yeah. Uh, big boot to the Ultimate Warrior. He yep. falls down. Hogan whips to the ropes. About to Tries to leg, leg drop. Fucking Hogan goes in convulsions because <laughs> he misses. <laughs> Ultimate Warrior uh, hits the big splash. One, two, three. And then Hogan kicks out. Yeah, Hogan F kicks three. out three. Yeah. And he prays to God and hits the fucking mat. And <laughs> there he goes. And then, uh, yeah, and then Hogan rolls out of the ring. Warrior's got the Intercontinental belt, but uh, he ain't got the WWF title yet. Hogan hands it to him. Ultimate Warrior does the world famous pound hug. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then fucking War Hogan gets out of the ring and gets on the ring cart. Yep, and goes back and yeah, and Ultimate Warrior has his moment. So uh, I thought this was a good match. Yeah. Uh, they hug uh, and uh, Warrior holds up the belts uh, and uh, big. Crowd moment for the Ultimate yeah. War at this point, and uh, you know Hogan leaves, and Ultimate War starts shaking the ropes yeah. as uh, WrestleMania yeah, exactly. Six goes to a close. What you guys think about this whole pay per view in general? I thought, like I said, I thought it was a pretty decent pay per view. There was a lot of fucking matches filler, filler just, matches, filler yeah. matches, but that's expected in, in know, early years of WrestleMania. Definitely matches you want to go like go and check out. Uh, Coco Ware and, and Martel definitely. That's uh, a good opener. Beefcake and Perfect, just to show you how good Perfect really yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, Macho King and Sherry versus Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire, just because it was a yeah. It was one of those matches that you can really go back and watch. Uh, Ted and Jake Roberts most definitely. Yeah. And probably last would be Hogan and, and Warrior. Yeah, those are the out. matches that you can really you need to watch. Yeah. The uh, it was a, I, I I think it was a. You know, it was a decent WrestleMania, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and the most most thing be my guy, my favorite wrestler at that time was in the audience actually watching that match. Edge, Edge was right there. You get you, you see a young Edge watching it right there in the in the Hulk Rules yeah. T-shirt, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, we guys hope that you guys enjoyed WWF WrestleMania Six review. Uh, we did a lot of work on yes. this, and we, yeah. and we hope that you guys enjoyed this review leading up to WrestleMania Thirty Five. Yes. Uh, very soon, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, give it a thumbs up or if a thumbs down. If you want to be an asshole, be, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to share it all over social media. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash WrestlingRampage2. Follow us on Twitter at WrestleRampage. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great videos coming to you each and every day right here from one of the best damn wrestling YouTube channels going today, Wrestling Rampage. Tommy, take it away. If you don't subscribe right here to Wrestling Rampage, then I guess your punk ass just don't know wrestling.